Welcome to worship at Northfield United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Rachel McIver Morey, and I invite you to join us as this year we bring Advent home. We are celebrating this season in a year like no other, and we are doing so very, very differently. But this means that we are invited to make every single home, whatever your home is and wherever it is, a sanctuary for the living God. If you are watching in one of our Sunday morning watch parties, we invite you to sign in. Just let us know where you are so that we can welcome you to worship. Also, we have another invitation. We've had some people reach out and ask about membership at Northfield United Methodist Church. If you're new to us in this strange pandemic season, or if you were with us before we went online with worship, we'd love to hear from you if you're looking at discerning how God is calling you to be part of this ministry. Drop us a line at info at northfieldumc.org, or you can direct message us or drop us a line in the chat box. We'd love to hear from you either way. Come, let us prepare our hearts and our homes for the advent of the Christ. Peace, O oh Christ, as only you can. Our hearts are heavy laden. Bring joy, O oh Christ, as only you can. Our bonds are frayed and fractured. Bring love, O oh Christ, as only you can. The future is a thing unknown to any of us. Bring hope, O oh Christ, as only you can. Our homes are Bethlehem, our hearts the manger. Come, Lord Jesus. Please join me in a prayer written by Henry Nouwen. Master of both the light and the darkness, Send your Holy Spirit upon our preparations for Christmas. We who have so much to do and seek quiet spaces to hear your voice each day. We who are anxious over many things look forward to your coming among us. We who are blessed in so many ways long for the complete joy of your kingdom. We whose hearts are heavy Seek the joy of your presence. We are your people, walking in darkness, yet seeking the light. To you we say, come, Lord Jesus. And Lord Jesus, it is we, the people of Northfield United Methodist Church, who speak to you now. We find ourselves apart from each other, but together before you in our prayer in the coming Advent silence, Lord, hear what is on our hearts, our prayers of light and darkness, our prayers over what we have to do and what we will have to do, our prayers over our anxieties and concerns, our prayers of gratitude for our many blessings, our prayers of grief, and our prayers for all of your people. And in this silence, Lord, as we share our own individual prayers, Please speak to our hearts and help us to know your prayer for us as well.
Lord, for being with us, for hearing us, and for speaking to us, we give you thanks. Just as we give you thanks for the way that you discipled us 2,000 years ago, teaching us the prayer that we still pray today. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. It's Pastor Rachel, and it's time for the children's moment. Today, we're going to talk about preparation, and what does that mean? Well, today I decided that I want to make some cookies. But before you make cookies, you got to have all the stuff out to do it. So I found my brown sugar. I found my oil. I found my regular white sugar. I found my cocoa powder, and I found my flour. I think I might make some earthquake cookies. For that, I'm going to need powdered sugar. Ah, there it is. Powdered sugar to make earthquake cookies. Have you ever made those? They're super yummy. Before you make anything, you need to be prepared and have all of your stuff together. Otherwise, you can't make it. And today we're going to talk about preparation in the sermon and preparing for Christ to come to us. So just like we need all of our things to make cookies, what are the things we need to prepare our hearts, our minds, and our homes for Jesus to come. It's sort of a fun thing to think about. If Jesus were to come by your house today wearing a mask and properly social distanced, what would you do to prepare for him? What would be the things you'd want to make sure you have at the ready to make sure that Jesus would be welcome in your home and in your own heart? This is the season of Advent when we prepare our hearts and our minds and our homes for the coming of Jesus because it is the promise that Jesus will come to us. So, I hope that you're getting ready. I hope you're finding all the things you need. And if Jesus comes to your house, I want to hear all about it.
Today's reading is taken from Luke chapter 12, verses 35 through 40. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You must also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. This season of Advent, we are using parables of Jesus to prepare our hearts and our homes and our hands for the coming of the Christ. We're using parables that talk about expectation or waiting in some way or preparing in some way. Today's is a very famous parable about preparing a home and waiting for the coming of a master whose time we do not know. And the outlines of it are very familiar. Jesus talks about uh, the slaves of the house keeping the house in tip-top shape because at any point the master could come home. And if the master comes home and finds that things aren't ready, well, things go really badly. But if the master comes and finds that the home is ready and finds that things are prepared and waiting for him, then the master will reward uh, his slaves. This is a a parable that is very much taken from the time and place of Jesus. And so uh, we need to keep that in mind as we think about some of the social constructs that he uses to explain this concept. What we need to focus on is what he is calling our attention to, which is the preparedness and the readiness. I want you to think about the exhaustion of keeping your home always ready for guests. Imagine that your house is like a B&B, &B, and at any minute, you might have somebody coming to take a room and uh, to share your table. For some people, they love that, and for others, that sounds like the worst thing in the world. Either way, whether you enjoy it or whether it doesn't sound fun at all, it takes time and it takes energy to do that. As I was reading and thinking about this passage, I considered... Uh, when is it that we have had to spend that kind of time and energy on preparing for people to come to our homes? And I realized right now, right now in this pandemic season, if you've had anybody over to your home at all, chances are you had to put some extra time and thought into it. And uh, for many of us, if we have somebody coming from outside our bubble to our home, that requires sort of a complex negotiation of masks and social distance and outside or inside how long. Um, all of these questions that 10 months ago we would have never thought to ask. So welcoming someone, even in a very small way, takes a lot of thought and a lot of effort, particularly now as infection rates are rising. So we have actually a pretty good sense of the anxious energy of this parable, of the preparation and the keeping things ready and uh, the making things right for when somebody comes. And this can actually be a holy exercise, a discipleship discipline, this preparing for a guest, this preparing for the Christ to come. And I have two things that I've thought of in relationship to that. Uh, the first is what we saw in Northfield, at least in our neighborhood, around Halloween. Halloween was tough this year. Uh, a lot of the things that sort of make Northfield Northfield weren't able to happen like they usually do. And so people had to think differently about how they were going to do Halloween. And we were really curious to see how people were going to do that or not do that. And many folks elected not to participate, which is a, a great and healthy choice. And other folks said, hey, if, is there a way we can make this work? And uh, at the Maury household, uh, we, and by we, I definitely mean Pastor Jared, set up this uh, really cool system of cones and fence posts and made uh, strings connecting all of them so it looked like a fence. And then he used 
uh, clothespins to clothespin full-size candy bars, six feet apart, full-size. Maybe you came by that night. We didn't have any candy bars left, so somebody did. So that was one way we worked out a contactless Halloween candy delivery. And as the family uh, navigated around the, uh, the neighborhood, there were all sorts of things that were set up uh, from tables with things set up in bags. Uh, some people had some really cool PVC pipe slides that they used to deliver candy, all sorts of ways that people had thought through to still have the holiday, but make it safer, make it a little more distant in that respect. The thought, the time, the preparation for the guest. There's something really holy and sacred about that. Another example I want to use comes from our own congregation, and I, I did ask permission to use this. Rick and Chris Estenson years ago built a center at their farm outside of Northfield, and it's become a community center in every possible way for our community. And all sorts of groups use it. Heaven knows our church has made good use of it, and I've been to so many events out there uh, inside and outside the congregation. This year in particular, uh, they have opened their doors because of how their structure is built and how ventilation can work there in new ways. And an example of that was with our Operation Backpack. Operation Backpack began uh, with women of our congregation about 20 years ago and has now expanded into being a community program that provides school supplies for every family in Northfield who needs them. They partner with the Community Action Center for the delivery of these things, but they needed a place to pack them. Unfortunately, we're still working on the uh, ventilation system within our own church building, and it just wasn't a safe space, particularly back in August, to do this. Well, the Estensons opened up their space where they had these big doors that they could roll up and so lots of airflow could come through so that the Operation Backpack Committee could pack uh, the school supplies and, and get those divvied up in that space. And that's just one example of the way that the Estensons in their years ago preparation for coming of people to their farm have uh, made a holy discipline out of hospitality. And it's a gift to us all. What I'd like us to consider is that after the pandemic, this level of thought and preparation for the guest doesn't need to end. And maybe it shouldn't. Think about it. In this time, whenever we're having somebody over to interact with in any way, we have to think about what do they do for a living? Are they vulnerable in any way? Uh, am I bringing risk factors into this interaction? We have to think about other people's health and well-being in ways that we've never really had to consider before. What might life look like after the pandemic is over if we bring that same level of thought and care when people come to our homes or come into our lives or come into our church. Now, maybe that sounds exhausting, but there's a gift in that because what it means is we are offering the same care and preparation in non-emergency times as we are right now. And what love could we communicate if we do that, if we embrace that as a gift if we are allowing this season to reteach us the holy discipline of hospitality. This first Sunday of December, the invitation of the parable of Jesus is to make ready, be watchful. And friends, I think many of us are already. Christ will come to us. That is the promise and the gift of the season. What level of thought and care and preparation are we putting towards making our homes and our hearts ready when Christ himself comes to us? Because like in the parable, he may come at an unexpected time and in an unexpected way. But if we offer the same level of thought and care and preparation as we are in so many interactions right now, we might find that we are readier than we think. Amen.
It takes time and energy to prepare our hearts and our homes for the coming Christ. The promise is that all the work is worth it because it means that when God comes to us, we are ready. Amen. <laughs>